Gracious Father, you promised long ago a Savior to overcome sin and death, and you fulfilled that promise in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Fill us with hope as we await Christ's return, which will bring the seed of your promise to full fruition, that our lives may show forth the joy of trusting in you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Sins. And not for ours only, but 
because all sin. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounding to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign to righteousness, to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So far, as I can read. Let's rise and draw together a confession of Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, one on page 12 in our hymnals. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Hail him, the heirs of David's line, whom David lords and call, the God incarnate, man divine, and crown him Lord of all, the God incarnate, man divine, and crown him Lord of all. Sinners whose love can ne'er forget the wormwood and the gall, go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So far, some text. May be seated. Christ Jesus, who is the seed of the woman, who was sent into this world to destroy Satan's power over us, is for the redeemed. As most of you know, Advent means coming. As the largest of trees begin with just a seed, so we see God's promise of salvation for mankind began the same way. After the fall, God promised that the fruit of Adam and Eve would be wounded, would have his heel bruised, would die, but in so doing, he would crush Satan's authority over all of mankind. From that seed of promise sprouted numerous prophecies concerning this coming one this Messiah, promised from Abraham and Sarah on the crossing of the Red Sea. And prophets proclaimed that out of the stump of Jesse would come a Savior sprouting. Every earthly tree has a beginning. 
is planted, it begins to grow. The tree of Jesse is no different. Jesse's tree really begins way before Jesse. It's way in the beginning of time. When God created Adam out of the dirt of the ground, and then formed Eve from around his rib out of the same dirt of the ground, but unfortunately, sin and death contaminated that tree. And the destruction of that tree could only be reversed when the creator of that tree himself became the seed. The seed of life that would conquer death. This text of the fall into sin and God's promise is probably one of the most familiar texts for us Christians. We see the immediate results of man's sin. And we see God's immediate promise of a Savior. That first gospel promise was given by God, not by a prophet, but by God. And that's the heart and core of this text. And also, it shapes all the Old Testament prophecies concerning this Messiah. Let's read it again. God, the Almighty God, is speaking to the serpent, who is Satan, and he says to him, I will put, I will put enmity, that is, warfare, battle, enemies between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise, that will crush your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The first thing we see in this Old Testament prophecy written in Hebrew is that the word for seed or offspring is a singular word. It's not many, it's just one. We have one seed who's going to come. It's not the seed of a man, it's the seed of a woman. And therefore the seed of the woman is fulfilled in only one, only one person, that is Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of Genesis 3, verse 15. He alone has come to crush Satan's authority and Satan's power over us. Our theme this evening is Jesus, the seed of Jesse's tree. Even though the Bible is, consists of 66 books, many, many writers, all kinds of history, Old Testament, New Testament, all kinds of characters, there's really only one story. Only one story in the Bible. It's the history. It's his story of our salvation. It's the history of our salvation from the seed of the woman. Therefore, to understand the end of our story, the end of our salvation, we need to go way back, back in time. We think, well, let's go back in time to Christ's birth, his incarnation. But even though it's a very important time, and even divides history, that's not far enough. The story of Jesse's tree, and therefore of Jesus' story, and of our story, we need to go back, all the way back to the beginning of time. When you look outside and you see trees, pine trees, maple trees, oak trees, they all had a beginning somewhere. All came from a little seed that the world even didn't even notice, and then it began to grow. So also with the story of our salvation, the story of Jesse's tree, it began in the beginning. In the beginning in creation, the story of salvation took place. Our first point this evening is we see the beauty of the Creator's work. Even as most of us know about the fall into sin, probably more people know about the creation story. How many of us, as soon as we hear those words, know that's Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, began time, began the universe, and God's greatest creature of the universe is mankind. We read, God created man in his own image, in the image of God who created him. Male and female, he created them. Creation, including the human race, it's not by accident, not by chance, not by evolutionary process. It was an intentional act of the almighty, eternal God. 
And again and again, as the days came to an end, and God finished his work on the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, and the fifth day, he said, it was good. And then at the end of the sixth day, when he was all done, God looked at his creation and said, it was very good. And very good it was. God created for our first parents a perfect garden named Eden. It was paradise. And there our parents lived a life of perfect harmony, perfect peace with each other, with all of creation, and with the God who created them. Perfect harmony and peace with their creator. Sin and its ugly consequences was unheard of. It was unknown in this world. You know, so many people have dreamed about an earthly Eden. <coughs> Sometimes people think that if we can make a utopia on this earth, if we just work hard enough, if we can do it, if we believe it, we can do it. It's never going to happen. The only perfect paradise that was ever created was by God before sin, and he'll do it again and recreate it on Judgment Day after the world comes to an end. But Jesus said, second point, the ugliness <coughs> of humanity's sin. How wonderful, how peaceful, how harmonious, how perfect life was for Adam and Eve for a while. But as you know, it didn't last. And the loss of that perfection, you and I can see every single day when we look at this world, or probably better yet, we see it every time we look into a mirror. What do we see? We see sin. We see brokenness. We see jealousy. We see anger. We see hate and war. Hopelessness, despair. Sickness, death. In other words, our eyes witness the loss of perfection every single day. The loss of what Adam and Eve had for a while in the Garden of Eden. We heard the story in our first reading. The story again we know so very well. He was walking in the garden. Satan disguised himself as a snake that talked. And this serpent tempted Eve by saying, you'll never die, you won't die. If you eat of the fruit, you'll be just like God, knowing good and evil. And Eve believed him, ate of the fruit, gave to her husband, who knowing full well where the fruit came from, and by his helpmate's invitation, also ate of it. But the initial sin was not eating the fruit of the fruit. The initial sin was listening to and obeying Satan. Eve listening to Satan, obeying Satan, and Adam listening to his wife, and rejecting God's loving command. A seed of doubt, a seed of greed, caused that first act to take place. The door to the perfect paradise of Eden was shut. To all people. So, what did the Creator do to his now sin filled creatures? Reject them? Leave them without any hope? Without any redemption? Condemn them to hell? It was not in the Heavenly Father's nature because God is love. And so out of love, he reached out to them, to Adam and Eve and all of their descendants, and he promised them a savior. He could not destroy them. He didn't leave them under the control of Satan. He promised them salvation. In love, he had created man and woman, and now also in love, he brought promise of redemption that he already had planned in eternity for his rebellious children. But the price was too steep for them to pay. In fact, the price was the lamb. Yeah. Read this passage. Revelation 13, 8. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus didn't die until 4,000 years of the history. Around 30 AD. 
And yet, well, let's just, he was slain from the foundation of the world because God promised already at the beginning of time that he would send his son who would have his heel bruised, would be killed, put to death, and die, slain for all of us. It was as if it already happened when God promised it. Third point, the promise of the new creation. Yeah, sin brings death, but from death also springs life. Through Adam and Eve and all of his descendants, we all bear the curse. We all bear the curse of sin and death that we deserve. But our loving creator, creator, as we said, did not destroy us. On the contrary, he not only embraced us, he became one of us. He himself took on our flesh and blood. We read again, the promise that God gave to Adam and Eve, I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman, between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise or crush your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Here the love of God shines through the darkness that Adam and Eve brought upon themselves. Here gives hope and comfort and assurance to Adam and Eve, who now realize they were trying to hide from their God. They deserve damnation. And God gives them this great comfort. I will send a Savior someday to save you from this great destruction. There will be one seed, one offspring, who would come and set them free. And it wouldn't be an offspring like Adam and Eve would have from a man and a woman, as is normal. This would be an offspring of a woman. Offspring of a woman, it is a miraculous conception, as we know, by the Holy Spirit in the womb of a young lady. The tree of Jesse begins with a seed. A seed that was present but dormant already in the first woman, Eve. And in love that remembered his promise down to the generations of sinners. Through these generations, that seed was present, even though people couldn't see it. It was there every generation. And finally, the Lord says, in the fullness of time, that seed began to grow. In the fullness of time, the Holy Spirit came upon a young virgin, the daughter of Eve, the Virgin Mary, and the promised seed would grow, sprout forth, and grow. This was the seed of the woman promised way back in the fall. From her womb would come forth God and man in one person. The God who created us, the God who now became one of us in order to redeem us. This is Christ. This is the Messiah. The Redeemer of all of mankind. All that was lost in Adam's fall now was restored by the seed of the woman, Jesus. Here's the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world, not just Adam and Eve's sins, but every single descendant after them. This is Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man. This is the new Adam who took the old Adam's sins together with all the other sinners of this whole world and placed them on himself and took our sins to the cross and then buried them in the grave. From the tree of Eden came death for all people. But from the tree of Calvary came life for all of mankind. And this Christ is also the Christ of Easter who by his resurrection has changed the future of every single person who believes in him. This is the slain and risen lamb into whose name we've been baptized so that we can rejoice in his death and also celebrate and rejoice in his resurrection. This is the lamb whose body and blood washes away all of our sin. This is Jesus, the seed of Jesse's tree. And through him, and him alone, the Eden, the paradise that was lost, is now restored again. And someday, we will have it personally. The seed of salvation promised so long ago was born into this world 
in the person of Jesus, his first advent. And on this advent season, we are again looking for our Savior's coming again, his second advent. The seed that came to this world was planted in the grave, but it sprouted forth, it rose again from the dead, and gives us new and eternal life. Giving us complete assurance that we can look forward to, wait, and prepare for our Savior's second coming. Amen. Let's rise. The peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds centered in the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give to you his peace.
Thanks for making that note on last week's feed. That helps a lot. Thanks.